Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this video. I want to show how I'm planning to generate electricity with my bike. Um, the video is um, divided into three parts and a preview of what's coming afterwards. Um, the first part will be uh, the background why I want to generate the electricity and at what amounts. The second part is the longest. It's a little negotiation about which kind of motor is suitable to be used as a generator. And uh, the last part is a, is a short demonstration which will probably take just a few seconds and then I'm giving uh, the preview. So the background why I want to do this is uh, it showed up that I like to do outdoor holidays with my bike and even then I'm carrying around my RC plane with mounted cameras and uh, I want to recharge the batteries especially from the plane. Until now I've always been lucky to find a connection to the power grid but in the future I want to become independent of this. And uh, so I was thinking about which kind of motor to be used as a generator, and I want to discuss this now. And uh, the first approach, or the first try I did, was with this motor. I still had it from earlier experiments or projects, however you want to call it. It's a normal DC motor, normal in the sense that it operates like a DC motor, but uh, in, the, in its inner, it's constructed a little bit, a little bit different. In a way, you can say. Um, at brushless motors, there are these outrunner types, which are which have the idea to bring less RPM and higher torque. And in a way, you can say this is an uh, outrunner type for DC motors. So uh, it operates at uh, 24 volts and draws 6,800 RPM, which is very very slow. Um, but in the end, I don't want to use this motor because uh, it's very expensive. I got this one second hand on a trade fair and even there I spent 100 euro for it and if you buy a new one it's around 300 or 320 euros so I don't want to waste this expensive motor on some auto use. I want to have something which is a little less expensive uh, for not saying cheap um, and I want to use brushless motors. The reason why I want to use a brushless motor is it's constructed much more simple since it doesn't have brushes at the name says it already and I guess if you're gluing the inner windings with resin it, they are becoming more or less undestroyable and can withstand moisture and vibrations and uh, dirt very good I guess. Um, yeah, of course my interest in was to get a motor which is not very big, not too heavy especially and uh, turned with the less RPM available and typically uh, the bell type Outrunner motors are the ones which are coming with the less RPM available. Um, so I got a small uh, bell type motor. I've already mounted it to my bike, um, but even this one came with a yeah this KV unit 850. But um, even that is much too high. For example, if I'm taking this DC motor I had at, in the first try. This one is, if you translate it to, to kV, it uh, spins with uh, 280 kV, which is much uh, a smaller amount than 850, so I knew right from the beginning I would have to renew the windings on the motor I bought and uh, to figure out how much windings I would need on each pole. And uh, that's not so complicated uh, since uh, there's a type number on this uh, housing of the motor, so I found the data sheet in the internet and I had the data sheet from this motor and each one telling how much RPM you're getting at a specific amount of voltage. Uh, the next interesting was part was uh, how the motor windings were connected inside. Um, since it's a free phase motor, mm -hmm. there are different possibilities to connect them. Um, I did some assumptions on that based on the idea that uh, the idea behind um, bell type is to bring less RPM at higher torque, so most probably the poles inside from one phase are connected in series, while the phases are connected in a star to each other. Yeah, and uh, I did the new windings in that style and uh, tried it with a blue LED, uh, just turning it with my finger to see if I can illuminate the LED. It was the same way I did at the beginning with this one, and uh, with my with the changed windings that showed up, it's, to, it's possible. So I knew that I most probably get the correct voltage. What I didn't knew, of course, was if I can get the power, which means uh, voltage and current. Since I used uh, because of the small space inside, I used a very thin uh, 
uh, copper wire which has only 0.3 millimeters in diameter. So I had to do a test uh, to get sure. So um, yeah, I had the springs into the last part. I mounted it to my bike and connected a 12 volt, 25 watt bulb to the motor to see if I can get around uh, a 12 volt, 25 watts. It's around a little more than two amperes. And I want to see if it's possible. At the moment, it, the bulb is just connected to one phase, so you can consider it as a worst uh, case testing. So I give it a short demonstration. And as you can see, the bulb lights up. So this is the evidence that it's possible to go this way. No, no gravity in here. Yeah, and uh, so from now on, I know I can go this way serious. Um, the preview is, as I told, the idea is to recharge the battery, which means I have some kind of recharge electronics I have to connect to the generator. And um, the problem is I found out that the charger I bought, it's a very simple one, which was the idea. It has only one button to start and stop the charging sequence. That was my idea to keep it as simple as possible. But the problem with the charger is when it's coming from low voltages, it's starting up in some kind of a fold mode, fold mode, and it doesn't enter operational mode. So I need some electronics which uh, clicks in the charger uh, when the voltage is clean, and uh, afterwards starting the charging process. Uh, more probably I do that by monitoring not the voltage of the generator rather than the RPM since uh, it's, it's, more, it's more easy to, to monitor the, the RPM than, uh, than monitoring some analog voltage which will most probably increase development time and I can't spend too many hours on this since this is just a hobby and I can't use full time on this. Um, yeah, I bring the next video once that is done. And if you're interested, uh, just watch my next video. Okay, um, see you then, maybe. Bye.